My name is Claudia Kempfert. I am not a climate scientist, so I am not telling you about melting glaciers, burning forests or other apocalypses. I am an economist. I am talking about costs and benefits. I have been working for 25 years on the topic of energy economics and calculate the costs of the different forms of energy – oil, coal, gas or even renewable energies. And I calculate what costs how much. For 25 years, my message has been fairly clear. The longer we delay the energy transition, the more expensive it will be. Nevertheless, far too little has happened in the 25 years in terms of climate protection. This must change urgently now. That's why for over a year now, there have been protests worldwide on Fridays for more climate protection. This is a talk for Monday. That's when the new week starts and we all begin to work. The people are rolling up their sleeves and getting started. Do you want to help stop the climate change crisis? Yes or no? No? Then goodbye. There's a door. Don't waste our valuable time. For those who say yes, I've put together a few thoughts and ideas. Because there's a lot to do. It's time to clean up. It's time to set up some rules for our global community so that we don't face a much worse disaster next Monday. Are you with me? You can do much more than you probably think, and not only in your individual consumer behavior. Yes, I don't eat meat either, and I like to ride my bike, even if it rains and the wind comes from the front. Climate-friendly consumer decisions are a good start, but climate-justed, justice cannot be bought in the supermarket. What we need are binding new green deals. By this I mean concrete agreements based on the global climate treaties to implement these goals nationally, regionally and locally. We need politically committed citizens who are committed to a different climate future in their own specific environment. We need to make decisions set priorities, continue what has been tried and tested, but also dare to experiment. Every company, every association, every school, every neighborhood is the core of a climate-friendly world. There, you and you and you, there you can all make a small but effective Green New Deals. Concrete climate protection contracts on how to reduce your emissions to zero as quickly as possible. Contracts? Seriously? I'm serious. Our whole life is based on contracts. When you go to the cinema, you sign a contract with the cinema operator. He promises to show you a certain movie at a certain time. If he doesn't do that, you get your money back. When you get on the bus, you sign a contract with a bus company. You may never have read the terms of conditions, but you know that you will have to pay a higher ticket price if you have not bought a ticket before and you get on the bus. There are already billions of contracts with which we organize our lives. They are not always made in writing, often verbally, sometimes even implicitly. These rules, agreements and contracts ensure that in case of conflict, our court ensures that they are respected. However, we have far too few con climate contracts, that means contracts in which it says that whoever harms the climate pays and that those who protect the climate are rewarded. Such climate contracts create clarity and transparency, also and above all about the costs of our way of life. Because the bitter truth is that fossil energy has been costing us a lot of money for decades. Politicians would have to come out in the front of the public and say, we have been covering up the follow-up cost of oil, gas, coal and nuclear power for decades. We have subsidized fossil fuels and nuclear energy with billions and we still do. That would be the truth. We have been discussing sustainability worldwide for decades and in the meantime the opposite is still being subsidized. There are contracts that state that you don't pay energy tax or value-added tax on kerosene for international flights. There are contracts that state that a company car is privileged or a tax refund is granted for agricultural diesel. 
there's a rule that energy tax is reduced when goods are transshipped in seaports and that electricity intensive companies receive subsidies to compensate for increase in electricity prices caused by emissions trading. And there are still a lot of regulation and subsidies for new heating systems. Such subsidies are absurd and the opposite of what we need. They are relics of time long past. They are vested interests of a few who are outraged when they are asked to give up their absurd privilege. We must dissolve such contracts and conclude new, meaningful, contemporary ones. To the contractually unregulated additional costs of the fossil world belong also the destruction and resettlement of entire villages for coal mining, the destruction of landscapes and biotopes through the extraction and transport of oil and gas, and last but not least, the health consequences of climate change. Billions of people around the world are affected. These are costs that can hardly be quantified, but which must be paid, if not by state, state health systems, then by the people themselves. The whole cost truth is even more bitter. We are engaged in over-exploitation of nature without consideration of consequences and above all without paying for it. We shift the cost in two ways, namely spatially and temporally. Spatially in that we do not deposit the garbage we produce in our own garden, but in the most distant places possible, out of sight, out of mind. We protect the domestic waters and landscapes. We forget and burden the distant ones. In addition, the redistribution of the cost in the time comes. The earth does not warm up immediately when we board an airplane, but with a time lag. Since we have been emitting greenhouse gases for over 115 years, but particularly in intensively in the last 40 years, a mountain of debt has been accumulated. We have been accumulating costs for generations, which will have to be paid back generations after us. Today, we are already paying the price of the past. But in the meantime, we are accumulating further debts. It's not just the baby boomer generation that has lived at the expense of others. It's also today's generation, X, Y, and Z. It is all of us who, whether we like it or not, continue to run up CO2 debts simply because we are part of the Western industrialized world. This too belongs in the radical truth about the real cause. That's why we urgently need new contracts, regulations and laws. But do we still have enough time for such contract negotiations? Yes, yes we do. The time to stop climate change is urgent, no question. But there's no reason to panic. The change of course is within reach. We are at a turning point. Now is the chance for a real change. In principle, the German population is very environmentally aware and has been for a long time. 87%, that means 9 out of 10 people, now want to implement measures against climate change quickly. And 71% now even believe that environmental protection should take priority over economic growth. If we manage to change by 2030, we can still prevent the worst from happening. Every day that we reduce our emissions earlier will save us time. That's why we must now think short term and concentrate on developing solutions that will have an effect by 2030 and preferably not beyond. We don't need perfect solutions for eternity, but quick solutions that get us over the short distance. It's all about clever improvisation instead of know-it-all perfection. Our task is to create structures that make it easy for people to act sustainably. For example, by making it visible when energy consumption is high or how much CO2 is in a product. At the same time, we should regulate it through laws and prohibitions that some products and offers do not even come into circulation or that certain behavior is punished with penalties. If we really continue along this path resolutely, from now on, there should still be enough time to slow down climate change and to preserve the Earth roughly as we 
know it today and as it has offered us a home worth living for the last thousand years. We, start, we stand at a crucial tipping point in history. The decisions we make now will have far-reaching consequences. The directions we set now will determine our future. Even decisions I make today has consequences, whether it is a small after effect, waves in the water, permanent damage or even extreme weather effects. We all share the same vision, out of the fossil fuel world into the renewable future. The momentum is there. Let's stand up together for small, large, fair, intergenerational climate treaties for new green deals. If we get off to a good start now, start acting with conviction and take the lead, then 2020, the year in which irreversible climate protection began, could go down in history as the tipping point. Then we would really have made a difference. We are the first generation to eliminate global poverty and the last to stop climate change, said United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon in 2015. It's 2020. Let's do it.